Okay, so in this video, I'm going to examine this profile, which I was told by a friend is a fake profile that was hijacked off of a real person. Previously, this profile belonged to somebody else, and now it belongs to this new person that's been hijacked. So I want to point out before I go into this, there are a lot of reasons why someone would hijack a Facebook account. Almost all of them have to do with money, and there's several reasons why it will happen. One of them is just simply not having a secure password, Another one of them is the stupid quizzes, like what animal am I on Facebook, where you take one of these silly quizzes and it spits out some information that maybe makes you feel good. But keep in mind, when you take these quizzes, you are giving personal information to the developer that made that Facebook app. For example, let's say the guy that used to have this profile decided to take a quiz like which character are you on Lord of the Rings or what animal are you? And they take this quiz here, which I'm not going to click on, mind you. And they have now fed a lot of personal information into that website, like maybe their Facebook login. So that's one of the ways people will get the connection info. Another thing to be aware of is porn sites will harvest this information off of your computer. So a good rule of thumb here to consider that's very uncomfortable is be careful where you go online. If you're going to these types of quizzes, or you're going to dirty places online, even if it's free music, doesn't matter if it's pornography or downloading, a, let's say, a movie you know you're not supposed to have because you didn't pay for it. When you go to those places, they can sniff your computer and grab cookies off of it, and then they will sell this information underground. Now, let's talk about some evidence that I see here on this Facebook profile. I see a lot of nonsense posts to companies that would want to promote links, like, I'm not going to click this link, but it's for a company called 8Tracks. I'm not going to click this one, but it's for answers.com. Same thing here. This person is making this post on jailbreakmodo.com, a really scammy, shady website. And the reason this is happening is a company like this comes to a social media promotion company and says, we want to get 10, 20, 30,000 links shared on social media. We want to find suckers. And the company that's going to make that post needs to have tens of thousands of profiles. Now, let's take a look at some evidence of some things that I see here that are really strange. If I go further and further into this timeline, I see there's a bunch of random likes that have been updated. Companies want to pay for likes. For example, Toons Bag, Limited Edition London Skyline T-Shirt, or Five Game Workouts, Seven Compact Carry-On Gadgets. When I see likes like this suddenly getting updated, these companies are paying for these likes. So let's take a step back and look at the ecosystem. So, turns out buying likes Facebook likes, Instagram likes, Twitter followers, etc., is something that happens. There is a demand for it, which I'll explain in a moment, and there really isn't a service for it by the average person. For example, most people aren't going to accept one or two dollars to post a link to something like this. Now, I am going to click this link to TicketWeb, but I would strongly encourage you not to click any links on a page you think is suspect. So here we have a situation where this person has posted a link to this event. They were probably paid for it, but not personally. A social media marketing platform was paid to get 10, 20, 30,000 links to this event posted. Again, the question comes up, why would anyone want to do that? Well, let's take another step back and get the big picture, the nuanced overview. There is a value to a social media following. Depending on how many friends you have and how many connections you have, your profile has a value. Might only be a few dollars, might be a couple hundred, might be thousands. Another consideration is how much a like or a fan is really worth. And it could be anywhere from a few hundred to thousands of dollars. This brings us to the next concept, which is how do companies interact with social media marketing? And I think the most important thing I can do and the simplest thing I can do is just point out to you that there's a marketplace where you can buy followers. And I'm not talking about just buying Facebook likes or Twitter followers. I'm talking about renting people who have large audiences. So I'm going to log into the Isaiah platform. Here I'm logged in under a client's account and I want you to see how this works. So if I have a client that comes to me that says, I have a health, lifestyle, or food product that I want to promote and I want to use social media to do it, I would come in here and research who some top influencers are in, let's say, the food category. Here I can see there's people that are willing to do a pay to play scenario. Now let's pause for a moment and examine what paid content is. It turns out companies will pay people who have blogs or just social media accounts to post stuff that makes their company look good. 
For example, maybe you're Kraft Foods and you want 10,000 moms to post pictures of your favorite mac and cheese, and your favorite, of course, should be Kraft, so maybe you're willing to pay 10,000 moms $100 in order to post some pictures of your famous mac and cheese. Maybe I can contact Amanda, Tiffany, or Becky and give her anywhere from a hundred to several thousand dollars to post something about why my chips, why my soup, or why my cake batter mix is the best and why they use it all the time. And if you take a step back now and you look at how this system is set up, the big picture, you can find people in any of these communities who are willing to accept money to do things online. The next consideration here is people who are listed in that directory have a vested interest in buying up fans, so much so that there is a search filter here I'd like to show you that has to do with the veracity of this person's particular connections. It's called Creator Fake Followers. So this system also tracks what percentage of this social media influencer's followers are fake. And if I do any search and I say, I want people who have less than 10% of their fake followers, notice how we're only dealing with about 10,000 people. And if I head back over into these filters and I say that I want people in the medium range, we're up to 16,000. And if I don't care what it is, we're dealing with 20,000 for this particular search. And if I remove this, of course, we're dealing with potentially millions of people in these communities. What's important to understand about this filter is connections that people can make may indeed be fake purchased likes. And the people who list themselves as influencers on these directories need to bloat their followings. Why would they do that? Well, it turns out if you have more followers, you can get paid more to do your paid content posts. So it's in your best interest as an influencer to have as many followers as possible. An eclectic mix of real and fake followers makes you look bigger than you may actually be. This is where we start to get into the shady underbelly of why something like this would happen. It turns out if you hijack enough profiles in specific areas, you have a certain amount of influence or control over that area, and the profiles you own become valuable because now you could promote tens of thousands of links towards an event like this in a very specific area, and you could be paid to have promoted it. So this is one of the other reasons why it's desirable to hijack real people's social media profiles. This brings us back around full circle to how does this happen. Let's examine that. Probably the most important thing I could point out here are hacker tools, specifically cookie sniffers. This means on any website that you visit there may be a packet sniffer. And the majority of websites you're going to visit that are legitimate above the board aren't going to have invasive packet sniffers. They're just going to look at your demographics. But more invasive packet sniffers are going to be used to figure out what you log into, what your usernames and passwords are. And where you're most commonly going to see these types of attacks happen are going to be in dirty places on the web. What do I mean by dirty places? Not just porn, I mean free music, free movies, or anywhere where you can download stuff like games that you know you're not supposed to have for free. Another perfect example, these free Facebook quizzes that promise to make you look cool. They'll make you look like you have words of wisdom, or they'll make you look like a famous Disney princess. These things are not free to build, and the developers who built them want something. What do they want? Your information. So when you take these quizzes, when you play these games online, you are sharing your private data. This also means when you download free books, free movies, free music off of the internet, and you do so while you're logged into your Facebook profile, you may unwittingly be giving a hacker or somebody who wants to build an influencer directory, your private profile information, and you paint yourself as a target. Why? Because it turns out these things are valuable and people can make money by using them. So if we assume that this profile previously belonged to John Doe, and John Doe was a real person that you knew that was one of your friends, and suddenly new pictures show up and it's not John Doe anymore, and all of these crazy likes start showing up, like these here, you are now technically being influenced by a third party who wants you to click on things like this SoundCloud link and do a download. And maybe they get an affiliate kickback, one dollar for every time someone downloads this song. And this hacker has hijacked this profile. Here's where it becomes important. If we examine this person, previously they were someone that we knew, but now it's this weird person and turns out they can influence all of our friends 
into seeing this type of nonsense on SoundCloud or these types of links. Now, if you take a look at this from the perspective of a government, and let's say a foreign government or a domestic one wanting to influence the political blogosphere, maybe you wouldn't even change the name of the person once you acquired the hack into their account. Maybe you would just want all of their friends to think that they're going to vote for candidate A or B. So the reasons for doing this now start to become apparent once we've taken a look at the big picture, but it really all just comes back down to money. Let's take a look at the friends for example. There's 1,500 of them here. It would take quite a while to build up a Facebook profile with 1,500 friends, and if you can just steal a profile that has 1,500 real friends instead of 1,500 fake ones, that's worth way more. The people who do this are being paid or they are going to get paid by taking over the Facebook profiles. In closing, remember that on Facebook, you are the product and your interactions are worth money. Now, I just spent all that time bashing the industry that I work in, so let me take a moment to try to point out where this is actually good. The companies that I work for will hire me to try to find legitimate people that are in their field. Let me give you a real simple example. Here in the business category, maybe we can find a bunch of people that are definitely worth hiring, like Damon John or Robert here, in order to promote your business idea. Maybe Megan here would be a great person to promote your new application or your company service. Maybe the co-ed media group is the perfect place to let people know they can get discounts on healthcare and let's say student housing. Maybe Alexa here is the perfect person to promote your book. These types of legitimate interactions are what is supposed to be fueling this industry, such as the influencer directory here on Isaiah. However, there is a dark underbelly where there is definitely money to be made by hijacking accounts and having them post all kinds of weird nonsense to strange things where they're going to make money based on what their previous friends actually interacted with.